Hello, welcome to Italics, the Italian American magazine. I'm your host, Anthony Tamburi. As we begin this year's production season, we celebrate our previous 20 years of producing unique programming and providing the best of Italian American heritage and culture to your television at home every month on Italics. Yet, as we look back, we must also move forward. There are many new programs, directives, and activities taking place here at the John D. Calandra Italian American Institute of Queens College, and this month we'll give you an update on many of them. First on italics, I'll be joined by Dr. Joseph Shora, Associate Director for Academic and Cultural Programs here at the Institute. Dr. Shora will discuss the many different cultural programs he has initiated and created. Next on italics, we will meet Dr. Vincenzo Milione, the Institute's longtime Director of Demographic Studies. Dr. Milione gathers and interprets data on the Italian-American community and experience for utilization by scholars and researchers in their academic studies, as well as for the analysis of the Italian-American workforce CUNY-wide. Now, let's go to the CUNY TV studios in Midtown Manhattan for our interviews and updates on the programs and activities of the John D. Calandra Italian-American Institute. Welcome, uh, Joseph Shora, who has a PhD uh, in folklore from the University of Pennsylvania, and who is the Associate Director for Academic and Cultural Programs at the John D. Calandra Italian American Institute. Welcome to Italics. Thank you. You uh, have um, come up with at least two programs since you began, uh, two public programs, and um, we should let our viewers know, even though we do have some faithfuls who come uh, just about every month to the, to the lecture series of book presentations. One is, in fact, a lecture series, and the other is book presentations, but they have specific names. So That's why don't right. you let our audience know? The uh, seminar series is the Phil, Philip Canestraro Seminar Series in Italian American Studies. And in fact, it was Professor Canestraro who started the seminar series. The idea about uh, the seminar series is to create a bridge between academia and the general public to bring scholars who are working in Italian-American studies, an interdisciplinary group of uh, scholars, to present their work, um, whether it's current research that they're working on or a recently published book um, or essay, and to bring it to the general public. Second program that we do is the Writers Read series, in which we present Italian-American authors representing their, um, their work, whether it's poetry or prose or memoir. So those are the two programs that we have. And coming up next month in October and perhaps even in November, some of the uh, people coming in either for the seminar series or for the Writer's Read. Sure. And we have Il Ilaria Serra mm -hmm. who's coming to present on her book. She's looking at unpublished memoirs by Italian immigrants and some of the, even their children. Um, works that were written down on scraps of papers, on notebooks, and kept in, in desk drawers or in the attics in the basement. She's put them together, but also analyze them and see what some of the themes are in the, that writing. And then we have Mary Capello, who is a author of a new book called Awkward, mm -hmm. and she's looking, it's a, it's a memoir and a reflection on the, the state of awkwardness and how it can um, sort of bring a certain kind of enlightenment and sort of transcendency. Great, great. Now, this year, we started something new. You That's started right. something new, we right. being the Calandra Institute under your tutelage, um, and it's called Documented Italians. That's right. That's right. What's the history of Documented Italians, first of all? Um, Documented Italians is a film and video series um, presenting documentary subjects on Italian Americans. They may be by Italian American directors or they may not be by Italian American. American directors, but the subject is always um, Italian Americans. Um, the Calandria Institute uh, sponsored a symposium called Mediated Ethnicity about Italian, America, Italian Americans and the Cinematic Experience in April of 2006, in which you presented mm -hmm. as well. And, and one of the things that emerged in that um, symposium was the whole concept and the representation of Italian Americans. And um, there's this constant battle going on within cinema and television within the Italian American community about how Italian Americans are represented and the whole image of Italian Americans as mobsters and those who are opposed to it. And it seemed to me at least and to a number of others that um, documentaries was a place where those alternative stories were being told. Um, stories about everyday folks who may not be heroes um, great inventors or great sports figures or who may not even be presented with heroic moments but people just going through everyday life and those stories are being documented so uh, the idea was to present that work that 
these are many of these films are small, um, short independent films and uh, often have difficulty getting um, a venue and a place to get screened. And we just showed one recently. Yes, we had um, Ed Landler, a uh, uh, director, uh, presenting on I Build the Towers about Sabato, Sam, Rodia, and his towers, um, incredible structures that were built in the uh, 20s, 30s, and even as late as the 50s um, out in Los Angeles, single-handedly created these towers, the tallest being 100 feet high, um, that have been now world-renowned as um, a type of environmental art. You got to do some things that they never got them in the world. Sabato Rodia, also known as Sam and Simon, single-handedly built the Watts Towers in South Central Los Angeles, here at 1765 East 107th Street. Galileo Galileo. He proved it where the earth can move it. The Pope was boss of that. He better not thaw in Italy. Thaw the Lenova. Thaw the Pisa. My God, I said, I'm going to make a tower different than the Galileo. I mean, they've definitely become icons for yeah. Los Angeles, and, but mm -hmm. a somewhat problematic one in which the, t the city of Los Angeles doesn't quite know how to deal with it, but the community of Watts has definitely has embraced, definitely embraced it. it. Right, exactly. And what do we have coming up uh, in the near future for the next month or two for Documented Italian? Sure. The next uh, film that we're showing in October is uh, Joe Cultrera's The Hand of God. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a very moving documentary, a very personal documentary in which he uh, uh, basically examines the life of his brother who was a victim of um, uh, clerical pedophilia and uh, does it in a way that doesn't browbeat the viewer and is not dogmatic, um, incredibly sensitive to the, the, the way in which that violence um, impacted not only his brother, his uh, Sicilian-American family and the community of Salem, Massachusetts, and then, of course, a larger Boston diocese. Being as brainwashed as I was, I would actually tell him what I had done. Plus, before other I'd send, it's been, you know, one week since my last confession. And I lied two times. I just talked back to my mother. I jerked off 43 times. He cut right through all the other sins and went right to that one. I said, well, uh, well, we need to talk about that. And, uh, you know, um, I'm going to give you forgiveness. But, you know, what I want you to do is, is come see me in the rectory. And when is that planned for? It's going to be October 1st. Mm -hmm. um, I know we have another film coming up which also talks about a subject that people haven't really talked about, and that is Prisoners in Paradise. That's right. That film, um, which is sort of, I guess, one of Italian America's or one of Italy's even best kept secrets. And That's you want to let our viewers in on that? Um, during World War II, Italian, -American, uh, Italian soldiers were brought to the United States as POWs and were. Um, placed in camps throughout the United States. There was one, in fact, um, on Staten Island here in New York City and um, out in California and the Midwest as well. And um, at a certain point, they, the, Italian, they, the, the, the U.S. Army allowed uh, the local Italian-American community in those various uh, campsites to take the Italian soldiers and bring them home, basically, and treat them like family. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what happened was, uh, as is depicted in the film, um, the Italian soldiers, after they went to Italy, returned back and married some of the became women. Became family. <laughs> became, truly became family yeah. and became Italian-Americans right. as well. Right. And so that's a story that exactly hasn't been told, um, is, isn't widely known, and hasn't been told even in writing to, to the degree that we should know And that's it. an hour-long film. That's a, they're most, many of these, all these films are approximately an hour yeah. in length. Now, we have uh, a few programs, a few special programs on the horizon. We have something coming up in October, and that's the uh, Youth Conference. Right. We're yeah. doing a, um, a conference on recent scholarship on Italian-American youth. Um, there will be two panels. One will be looking at uh, education and achievement, and the second panel will be looking at um, culture and identity. And I think uh, there's so much, I, I don't want to say necessarily lip service, but there's a lot of... Um, talk about the work that we do as Italian-American scholars and a number of the Italian-American organizations and that so much of it we, we say is geared to the Italian-American youth. But so I think 
so little is known about the Italian American youth. And so this is an attempt to address that issue. Um, Professor uh, Donald Tricario is going to be presenting on Guidos mm -hmm. and how that uh, term has changed over the years and how that is, there's a subculture of people who I self-identify as Guidos and they've appropriated that once negative term and s wear it now as a badge of identity. Mm -hmm. um, I myself are going to be presenting on Italian American hip hop rappers um, who um, are found throughout the United States and who are going to be um, and circulate a lot of their information on the internet whether they're on MySpace or various websites um, they uh, circulate their music, their lyrics, and they communicate amongst themselves um, through the Internet. Let me ask you, you're, you're a Ph.D. in folklore, as I mentioned before. What is your own research? What are you working on? Um, I'm actually working on three books. Um, I'm pulling together a book uh, called Built with Faith, which is looking at the ways in which contemporary Italian-Americans in New York City create religious spaces, whether they're yard shrines, whether they're domestic altars, where they are the um, ephemeral spaces of the festa, the religious what, feasts. What do you mean by altars? I mean. Do these people actually build altars in their homes? Sure. Because I think people are sort of wondering, hey, altars. What sure, altars? sure, yeah. sure. Um, men, women predominantly, but also men, create um, domestic altars, altars that they um, focus their spiritual energy in uh, creating with God, uh, speaking, communicating with God, um, whether it's um, predominantly in the bedroom, um, sometimes could be in the living room, um, and they have those altars for their personal and family use. And in New York City, there's still the tradition in which uh, for the feast day, whether it's for Our Lady of Mount Carmel or St. Joseph, St. Anthony, uh, people create temporary altars um, that are up for a couple of days, and their home becomes public space. Uh, people actually come into the house. They have mass there. They have novenas there. Um, and, and, of course, they socialize and have food there as well. So it's a way of the idea of creating religious spaces that serve as a communication between um, the mundane and the sacred, but also between the private and the public. The other thing that I'm working on is a collection of essays on Italian-American folklore, which was originally published um, in our Italian-American Review, our social science journal. Um, but uh, we're pulling those together, expanding on it, adding some more essays, and um, um, we're going to be trying to publish that as well. And then finally, I'm working with Edvige Junta, on a collection uh, of uh, scholarly essays and creative work, creative work being poetry and prose as well as visual, on uh, Italian women's domestic needlework from the diaspora. So what's ex this also came out of a, a seminar series that we did in, uh, um, not a seminar series, a symposium we did in 2002 on Italian American domestic needlework. In, that was entitled Biancheria. It's called Biancheria. Biancheria. Um, and, uh, We've gotten such wonderful response to that. We, people just re continue to uh, email me, communicate with me about that. There's nothing, nothing been published about this. Um, so the, there's a real um, lacuna that needs to be filled. And we're, we feel that this book will, will attempt to so, do that. So we have a lot to look forward to. So. I mean, I'm, as a folklorist, I'm deeply committed to the idea of a public scholar. And I see a lot of the work that we do um, at the Calandra Institute, as, a, as I said before, as a way to bridge that, com that, that gap between the, the academia and the general public. At another institution, we call them the public intellectual, which, is, uh, Indeed. which is, has its roots also in Italian. But that's for another program. Well, I want to thank you for visiting with us and um, wish you uh, the best of luck on the work that you're doing. Thank you. And um, we look forward to talking to you again on camera. Thanks thank you. Lot. Thank you, Anthony. Welcome. Welcome, Dr. Vincenzo Milione, uh, to Italics. Thank you. Uh, so our audience knows, um, Vincenzo holds a PhD in civil engineering from SUNY Buffalo, but, it, but the degree when you earned it was not the typical civil engineering degree. Why don't you just give us a minute or so on what the uniqueness of it was? In the late 60s and early 70s when uh, the educational system as well as society was changing and there was a, more of a need to use technology to serve some of those social issues. And there was a program funded by the National Science Foundation called Social Engineering mm -hmm. 
that was in the Department of Civil Engineering, and I happened to be one of the first graduates of that program. You are the Director of Demographic Studies, and over the years, your work has been predominantly in demographics, uh, educational studies, migration shifts, things of that sort. But yes, we do have a history, a very important history of the immigration of Italians to this country that basically started around 1870, as we could see in this chart here, that, uh, and ironically, this is the time when Italy was just formed as a country. So when we think of the history of the Italy as a nation, that history does include Im immigration. And in that process, as we see in this chart, that we had a large immigration, up to two million Italians coming in per year. Unfortunately, just as everything changes, but in 1920s, uh, the uh, 1924 quota was established where the southern Italians were not able to come. But then we see another uh, increase of Italian immigration after World War II due to some of the situations that happened. A lot of people really don't aren't aware that there was another sort of bump in immigration in World War, after World War II. Well, I could, attest, yeah. Yeah, I could attest to that because I'm part of it. <laughs> I came to this country in 1955, mm -hmm. so yes, I'm part of that second wave. Uh, and again, that's why many times we think that we have outgrown our, our grandparents. This picture shows we probably have copies of these type of pictures and albums. It's like the first immigration wave and the second immigration wave we were not fully accepted in this country, and we were dealing with some of the negative stereotypes. The next picture. Mm -hmm. The stereotypes began when the first Italian exactly. stepped foot yeah. on the, yeah, on the, the, on the shores. Exactly. exactly. Yes. And, this is and morphed over the years into different types of uh, figures, but negative stereotype is still there. Um, let's get back to the immigration a little bit. We can characterize a difference you know, between the first immigration and the second immigration to some extent, whereas the first was the Italians left La Miseria yeah. in, from 1880 to 1924, that sort of those 40 years, right, that period of the, the initial great wave of immigration. Yes. But the second one was different. It was, it was La Miseria to, to, to Bene. Mm -hmm. It was still suffering, okay? It was still for economic you know, reasons. You know, still for economic reasons, but yes, uh, the Italians have reached the point where they did have some security. They'd lost that security through World War II, you know. So, uh, plus, it was their desire to follow up on their fathers and, and friends and relatives' stories of what mm -hmm. they uh, did. So a lot of the second way was to follow up on history. Maybe that's the way to look at it. But they were better off definitely than the first yeah. wave. Um, and this, this could brings us to another subject matter. Once, once our ancestors, grandparents, parents, whatever, great-grandparents were here, um, Initially, they came to the big cities, the big city, our city. Yes, exactly. Right? But there have been shifts since then. The population changes, uh, not just in uh, New York City, which is the first three bars, but also within New York State and USA. Uh, right now, we have about 15, 16, 15, 16 million Italian Americans that identify themselves directly to the U.S. Census. And throughout that, we are able to understand not only where we lived be before, but where we live now. In New York City, there was a time there where one out of four of all the time, uh, of, of the whole population was Italian Americans. But as we see in the in the first bar chart, that, that from 1980 down to where we, to, to 2000, we have decreased uh, now to approximately nine percent of the population in New York City. In New York City, but but they didn't go away too far away. Mm -hmm. Many of them through upward mo mobility moved out to the suburbs, and now we do see populations in Long Island and Westchester and Northern Jersey of 25 to 30 percent, which is one out of three of the population. Throughout the United States, we have maintained generally about 6 percent of the population, which is uh, the fourth largest ethnic group in this country. Uh, 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 recently, the German ancestry, which were the first immigrants during the Revolutionary War, have become the largest ethnic ancestry. Uh, uh, understandably, Anglo is the second largest, 
Irish being the third largest because they were the next largest immigrant group, and the Italians become the fourth largest. So we are a major voice in this country. But the issue there, which, which you made an excellent point, Anthony, is that we still have a population that is not fully identifying themselves with their ancestry. If we do look across the United States, we do have 3,000 counties in the United States, but 2,000 counties have less than 1% Italian Americans. That means within uh, states like Idaho, Montana, that you would have to come across 100 Italian uh, people before you find exactly. one Italian American, and that may not even be first generation Italian American. Yeah. Unfortunately, when that happens, this part of the population gets much influenced by what they do see on television and the media. So, where they don't come across Italian Americans on a daily basis, they do get to watch shows like The Sopranos on a uh, weekly mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. let's, let's pass a little bit to. Um to Italian Americans and their achievements in education, let's say, because that's also something that you've worked on over the years and you've dealt with both the positive, the achievements, and you've also dealt with the dropout rate. Right, so. right. And yes, uh, many Italian Americans didn't just come because of economic reasons, they also came to do better. They also came to utilize the educational system mm -hmm. here. And, and we are proud that they have done that. So if we look in this next chart, that we see that at least from 1990 to where we are now, the recent date of 2005, we could see that the uh, percentage of Italian American community with less than high school is going down drastically. And matter of fact, if we look at the other bar there, the red bar, then we see that that decreases, uh, decreasing more than the general population. So, so we are getting the basic education there. Along those lines, we have taken advantage of our educational system, and the next chart shows that in terms of Italian Americans getting bachelors in, uh, in the United States, we have increased appreciably along th those lines. October 25th, uh, we are the Kleiner Institute has sponsored a conference symposium, a one-day symposium, on contemporary Italian-American youth, and you're going to be presenting some of your research on Italian-American youth and education. Um, we'll be able to get more detailed information at that time. Uh, with the use of data in the 1990s, and that is uh, as we started to do these educational achievements, that we did find that uh, in New York City, when the population was still fairly young after, after, after the second wave, that there was a high school dropout rate, on around 21 percent. That means meant over a four-year period, one out of five of the Italian Americans did not graduate. Did not graduate high school. It is fortunate the Italian American community working together in the 90s, the Sons of Italy, the Commission for Social Justice, the National Italian American Foundation, the Calandra Institute, mm -hmm that uh, we were able to reach out to the high schools using the Clams Institute counselors, that in which case we provided positive uh, mentors, we provided book covers with positive images. Since that time, the high school dropout rate has, has decreased. But this is a very good example how, how research could turn around the community, turn around the issues to make it work. Unfortunately, we lost track of that. If, as we look at the curve, we start to see as we go into the late 1990s and early uh, to 2000, the high school dropout rate is increasing again. And to what extent that it is correlated with more negative images like as what evolved with the onset of the Sopranos in 1999. The civil service report, you've been working on this for well over a year now. Why don't you speak just to some of the preliminary Yeah, yeah and I'll try to make that. it briefly. And if we just look at this next chart it's between uh, 1980 and, two, and 2000, that the percentage of Italian Americans working in New York City government has, has increased. But, but that's only because the population has decreased. So even though we've done better in government, it hasn't been necessarily because of full attraction. But if we do look at 1990s, when there was a Italian American leadership in the city, we do see that the Italian American community did have more access to government and organizations like the National Council for Colombian Associations working with the youth at that time. And the end result is what you see in the next chart, that if we look at the growth 
of Italian Americans in entry level positions in management and professional positions, we went from an increase of 11% in 1980 to 14%. This is, again, working together as a community, not just the organized community, but the public community, reaching out and understanding the research studies that we do do and putting them into practice can make a difference. Great. It isn't just looking at the Italian, Italian American the community and government on the outside. We also play a very active role here within CUNY. Right. That it's very important that for treating Italian-Americans equal and to also improve the higher Italian-American does, uh, does occur. Does in fact improve. And, exactly. and that is something that we are looking forward to uh, as we see in the next graph over 30 years that the Italian American hiring has been virtually stagnant. But we have, ma have made progress We've recently. We've made progress recently, and we, we are hopeful, I'm hopeful, and I think we're all hopeful, that we'll be able to inform the public um, about the progress that we believe will continue. We have two, two things that we need to report back on in the next months, uh, sometime in this season of italics. We have the civil service report, and we also have the improvements, the progress that has that have taken place with regard to the whole utilization of Italian Americans within CUNY. So I want to thank you for your visit here with thank us you. today um, and for the work that you've been doing and for the work that um, we have ahead of us. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Next, on Italics News Briefs, we follow our camera crews around the tri state area as they take you to some of the many events that recently made news in the Italian American community. The Calandra Italian American Institute is proud to announce the broadcast of four special hour-long programs every Monday during the month of October on CUNY Television Channel 75 to celebrate Italian Heritage and Culture Month 2007. On October 1st, we present the New York Conference of Italian American State Legislators Weekend Conference. On October 8th, Italian Heritage and Culture Month 2007 Preview, an interview with Dr. Angelo Gimondo, founder and chairman, and Cavallari Joseph Sciami of the Italian Heritage and Culture Month Committee. On October 15th, honoring the 200th birthday of Constantino Brumidi at the U.S. Capitol. And on October 22nd, Critical Histories Towards a New Perspective on Italian Americans, a symposium featuring scholars Donna Gabaccia and Maddalena Tirabassi. Well, that's it for this episode. As we roll this month's credits, you'll be hearing and seeing Italian singing sensation Carmen Consoli, who recently performed at Joe's Pub in Central Park. Italics covered that event and will present a segment on Carmen Consoli and her music next month. Thanks for watching Italics. Please join us again. I'm Anthony Tamburi. Arrivederci alla prossima puntata. See you next time. <laughs> cane che ha già morso il padrone di certo un giorno o l'altro proverà di farlo notte un precipita senza figlio patrito stridente di copi rimorsi un vuoto d'aria e di speranza di lui